There are benefits and drawbacks to buying real estate in a corporation that you definitely need to be aware of. In this video, I sit down with former CRA auditor and now tax and accounting expert Dave Putinen to talk about when you should set up a corporation to buy real estate and when it does not make sense to do so. Dave also lays out what you can do if you already have properties and you wanna move them over to a corporation and the cost to do so. Stick around until the end of the video where we discuss what you can do to avoid an audit and what you you should be doing right now to help keep your business organized. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Let's get right into it. Let's talk a little bit about corporate structure because this is probably the, the biggest question I get when it comes to accounting. Is there a, a, you know, a threshold that you want to set up a corporation and start working inside of a corporate structure? The things that differentiate um, corporate activity from, from just sole proprietorship for me would be things like the size of the endeavor, the size of the portfolio you're growing, your risk, how exposed will you be to potential lawsuits, to other creditors, etc. And then the third part would be long-term, what are the plans for what you're acquiring? Are you looking to grow something that one, you can be able to draw down in your lifetime, maybe to fund a retirement and, or are you looking to grow something that you want to pass along to somebody? Um, so those are the three questions that routinely I try to get answers from, from a client before I say, uh, let's go ahead and incorporate. Not one of them is more important than the other. In fact, you might just say, I'm only going to buy four properties and, and they might only be condos. Well, if you were to buy those condominiums in your personal name, if the plan for these was to give them to somebody, then you are not going to be able to execute that plan in the end because there will be such a massive tax burden on those condominiums, whoever's taking them over being massively out of pocket to pay the taxes to get what you want to give. A corporation would be one of the two alternatives, the other one being a family trust, to be able to make that happen. Break down the, the different structures that we can have. You mentioned the family trust, you mentioned the corporation. Uh, explain the differences between those, those sure. structures. So when, when clients come to us and say, well, we want to do this particular type of real estate investing. So we would run through the opportunities for them to do that, um, the forms that they might use. So you could do it in your personal name. You could do it, which if you were running a business in your personal name, you'd call that a sole proprietorship. In real estate investing, you'd, you'd just call it investing in your personal name. And then you'd have a partnership which is two people coming together. You could have a joint venture, which is like a partnership, but there are important differences between the two, particularly in terms of how they are taxed and in terms of liability. You could have a trust set up and a trust is a very important tax planning vehicle as well. A lot of times it goes along with corporation and a trust has many of the same characteristics that a corporation has, but there are things that you can get with one that you can't get with the other. And then the next part that they would have would be a corporation. The business that you have in mind, what you're planning to do with your vision, what structure will it fit into taking into account those three main things, wealth conservation, liability protection, and being able to grow it in a tax efficient way. And that's going to be the next question that's going to pop up for many people because they're going to realize they're a little bit further down the line than they'd like to be without having maybe gone with a corporate structure. What's the, what is the retroactive ability to, to set up a corporation later on and move properties over to the corporation? Give us a, a basic rundown of how that can work or if it even does work. So you can move any asset you want into a corporate corporation at any point in time, anywhere in Canada. So you really get into whether it makes sense financially to move properties into a corporation. We've had clients spend tens of thousands of dollars on land transfer taxes to move something in because there was a very particular estate planning reason. The things that you have to keep in mind though are that you might already have a mortgage on your property. When you move a property from your personal name to a corporation, you're ending a mortgage in your personal name and you're starting a mortgage in your corporation and you will have to notify the bank of that. They may charge you a break fee. They may charge you an additional amount of or, or a higher interest rate for a corporate mortgage. It's possible. You can't also, by the way, bought a property in January and set up a, a corporation in March and at the end of the year reported everything as though it were in the corporation. The corporation has to exist prior to the property being bought. Now, a lot of clients talk about, well, you know, someone told me I don't have to pay the tax. Well, that's not true. You can defer the taxes using Section 85 rollover. Okay, but this is these are expensive things to do. You know, I will vouch for 
the number of times that we've actually done rollovers for clients is so small into the number of times I've talked people out of doing it. Because the main thing we want you to do is make money. And what you're going to do is cost yourself a whole lot of money by moving things over into a corporation just because you think that's going to somehow magically make you money. And it's not usually. Is there been a rule change in terms of passive investments and what they're taxed at and active investments? And can you define yeah. those two? It used to be that all corporations, active corps and, and passive corporations were taxed the same. And routinely people would buy properties and put them in their corporations and get active business rates on and the government said, well, you know what? We don't like this idea of using corporations as a stockpile for these essentially passive land holdings and real estate holdings. So what we're going to do is we're going to initiate a regime called a dividend tax credit or refundable dividend tax credit regime. You know, that's a fancy way of saying the government wanted to make sure that $1 tax in your personal name and $1 tax corporately end up being ultimately to the shareholder the same after-tax amount. So it's sort of a, an idea that we don't want you stockpiling the money. If you stockpile the money in your corp passively, we're going to tax it at a highest marginal rate. That's called the theory of ent integration. So integration means the tax system is supposed to work corporately, flows personally, all tax the same. Well, we have the opportunity through various measures and, and expenditures and non-cash items available to us in a corporation so that $1 over here isn't taxed like $1 over here. It's taxed a lot less. Don't completely disregard the high marginal rate. Just trust us. $1 over here is not taxed one over here for the right people. Okay. So um, the high passive rate, absolutely. But suffice it to say, you're never going to pay more than that unless your account falls asleep, pay more than you would in your personal name. And all the opportunity is to pay a lot less through all the mechanisms that, that are tricks of the trade, so to speak. But they're not, they're not really tricks. They're rudimentary tax plan. So what is your best advice for people when they're setting up their real estate investing business to baby, to help their accountant and make the transition as easy as they can for everybody right. involved in that? A situation. Traceability is the biggest part of this. Traceability as a former auditor, the accountants and clients who upon audit brought to me a perfectly prepared set of records with tabs and everything easily traceable to a bank account. We want clients to understand that when you're running a business, you're going to have a lot of expenditures that you wouldn't necessarily have be able to deduct if you were just doing things in your personal name. And that's an expenditure that it's allowable to you in a corporation that perhaps isn't going to be allowable to you in your personal name. So we've got to be able to track all these expenditures. And moreover, you might be paying for some of these things out of your own pocket, but in fact, you're doing it for your corporation. So how does that work? How do we make sure that it's going into the right bucket? First, we recognize, hey, you spent this for business purposes. We want to make sure you get to deduct it. Let's trace everything to its original source by way of a bank record. So one thing I always ask people is because they've been told over and over again that they need a receipt to be able to deduct something for an expense, I say, well, where does it say that? Anywhere in any written document in the Tax Act. And the idea is if you're spending something for your business and it's believable, we, we just had a client who did um, some work on a native reserve and the people that uh, she was building on the reserve had some casual labor, very averse to providing receipts to people on that scenario. And um, the auditor had disallowed it. And we said, this is a bona fide deduction that is an expenditure for business. So we can trace that to the bank account with the right sort of record keep. Okay. And, and we utilize things like receipt bank saw application, which is take a picture with your phone and it uploads. Um, we have probably 90% of our clients on QuickBooks online right now. The applications like that, like HubDocs, um, these are the things that are going to allow you to properly trace for your own records. So you know, hey, I spent money. Did I get credit for that? Oh yeah, there it is. But also on CRA, it's easily presentable in a, in a tremendous format for them to be able to just like I would sign off on and pass it back. Wow. Dave shared a ton of valuable information in that interview. If you're wondering how you should set up a corporation to buy real estate, it's one of the modules in my masterclass. Check it out at darrenvoros.com. If you have questions for Dave, I'll leave his info below. And if you have questions for me, you can always leave those in the comments section. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.